Welcome to the session GDNT for Design and Quality Engineers. In this session, we are going to see the introduction of GDNT, history of GDNT, and the advantages of using GDNT in drawings. So, GDNT is a technical drawing language which is used as a standard throughout the world. In the manufacturing environment, quality is very, very important and we must control the cost and process must minimize waste and use the resource very, very effectively. To achieve these things, many parts are now purchased globally. Means no component like uh, all the components need not have to be manufactured in the same organization or in the same machine shop. If a similar part is being supplied by a supplier for a less price outside the country or outside the company, so companies are ready to go and purchase those parts. In order to buy all these parts outside the uh, our company, so we need to make sure that the design intent needs to be conveyed properly to the manufacturing plant or the supplier like what we need that needs to be supplied uh, informed to the supplier so when we use gdnt since it is a precise language with engineering symbols this symbols can be understand by all the people in the world so if we create a drawing using these symbols this will be easily uh, readable and it will be interpreted in the proper manner by whoever is reading the drawing in the world. So this gives us the benefit of conveying the design intent properly to the manufacturing plant so that the manufacturer creates the component in such a way that it is functionally fit and it meets our standard and it satisfies our uh, assembly also. So GDNT is widely used in aviation industry, automobile industry and heavy equipment industry. History of GDNT. So the history takes us to the year 1938 by the engineer called Stanley Parker. When he was working in Great Britain, he found that parts were rejected when inspected using the traditional tolerances. However, he found that many parts were functionally fit, but they are technically out of specification tolerance, so they have been rejected. So when we investigated further, he determined that the standard XY coordinate tolerance resulted in a square tolerance zone like this, a square tolerance zone. But what he found is the parts that were slightly lying out of the square tolerance were rejected but they were functionally fit. For example, in this drawing you can see if you draw a circle covering this square, you will get a radius of 0.07. So if the part is like just lying outside this 0.05, they were telling that it was rejected, but functionally it was fit. So that's what it made him to determine the concept called as true position. So true position is the position of the future defined by the basic dimension. So it's nothing but basically defining the future's location by its basic dimensions. So based on the true position concept, now in today uh, we have developed a lot of other concepts like flatness, straightness, roundness, round, run out and much more other concepts have been developed in the GDNT. What is GDNT? So geometric dimensioning and tolerancing is a language of symbols as we discussed earlier used to describe a part's nominal geometry and the allowable tolerance for variation. So it defines your component's geometry and it gives a tolerance also how much it can vary because no feature you, without any tolerance you can't manufacture any component so we need a tolerance so that can be defined properly using a GDNT. So it helps us to define a future's location, shape and orientation of the part. So you can see in this figure you can see size, form, location and orientation these can be controlled effectively by using GDNT. So this is very important for any component to be manufactured and uh, the main advantage is like a function of a part and how that part functions with related parts is taken into account when we use GDNT. If you don't use GDNT a part will be dimensioned only based on its own features like a component is having a hole means only hole that much only it will be there but when we use GDNT it considers this part where it is going to assemble or uh, what is the function of this part and accordingly what are the tolerances is required those things will be taken into account and it will be applied. So GDNT has established standards which is used throughout the world so everyone can follow it very easily without any issue. The proper application of uh, GDNT is defined within an American Society of Mechanical Engineers standard used primarily in the United States. So this is the 
standard which is followed in the United States, American Society for Mechanical Engineers. They have described the GDNT, how to use the GDNT in a drawing. This is followed in the US. In the rest of the world, it is defined by the International Organization for Standardization, which is called as ISO. So except the US, remaining part of the world are following this one, including India. Now we will come to an interesting session. So I am showing you a drawing where you can see it's a it's a drawing which is created for manufacturing this component by an engineer and when you see here I feel that uh, everything is available like if you can you find any missing dimensions I'm just checking it out for example the thickness the thickness of this is available here 0.815 yes the depth of the counterbore is 0.5 available the OD is 6 sorry not 6 it's 11 it's available so what is the bore size it's given as 5.5 the counter bore dimension is given as 7 millimeter the small hole dimension is given as 3 and thickness is given as 0.25 the PCD is given as uh, die of 0.515 and the PCD diameter is 4.5 so all these dimensions are given and with a tolerance so as I mentioned earlier no component can be manufactured without any tolerance so this drawing I can say that yes this is a good drawing which is having the required dimensions to manufacture the component and the tolerances also so using this drawing I have created a component and I have inspected also so this is the drawing they have given and using this drawing I have created a component like this will you accept this part you will say no but if you dimension if you check the dimension one by one I feel it is correct only I can say it is correct for example this dia dimension diameter 5.5 .5, if I look into it it is coming 5.496 it's having a tolerance which means it needs to be plus or minus between 5.48 to 5.52 so 5.496 is lying within the tolerance only and if you check one more dimension the thickness 0.815 for me it is coming in the component 0.819 and 0.811 that is also lying within the tolerance zone and if you look into this diameter 3 I am getting 3.012 again it can be between 2.98 to 3.02 so 3.012 is within the tolerance likewise if you check each and every dimension everything is lying within the tolerance only in spite of all these dimensions lying within the tolerance zone I have component uh, like this will it be acceptable definitely I would say it is not acceptable no one will say that oh no if this function this component will not meet but I have achieved as per your drawing only that is what the argument will come when you inspect this component with a manufacturer he will say that see as per your drawing I have created the component everything is fine but if you look into the functional wise assembly wise it's not going to be satisfying you so when you apply the GDNT so this is a drawing which was created without the proper application of GDNT when I create a drawing with a proper application of GDNT you can see here in this drawing you can see lot of rectangular blocks these are the GDNT symbols and the tolerances which is being defined so when you create a drawing like this it is like a foolproof and it will make sure that your component is made as per the requirement of the assembly and it meets as per the designers uh, requirement so this drawing will be acceptable and if you supply this drawing to the manufacturing plant which may be within India or outside India everyone will read it properly and everyone will make the component in the same size shape form everything okay so after looking into this you can see that uh, its main advantage is manufacturing the part in the perfect size and shape so it uh, one more advantage is it reduces the amount of nodes dimensions and tolerances required on a drawing you can see a drawing below here so in this drawing you can see there are a lot of elements are assembled here and many nodes are there of course drawing will be having some nodes I, I agree with that one but when we use the GDNT you can reduce the number of nodes which will avoid ambiguity and your drawing will look very clear and the interpreter will be interpreting in the proper manner and he without any confusions he can understand the drawing and wherever required the dimensions will be there and required tolerances can also be applied and the second benefit you can see is establishing the datums so datums is like a reference reference positions or reference planes from the reference you can dimension the other features so you can determine where you need the datums all those things you can give it in the uh, drawing itself if you use the GDNT and it reduces the cost and improve quality reliability and safety 
safety means it's ensuring that your part is manufactured to the requirement without any rejections in the first time itself and reliability is like a, every time you will get a same size of the components same shape same function same feature everything will be there and it improve your overall quality also so driving forces behind the gdnt so what are the driving forces which led to the development of gdnt and why so many people have started using the gdnt so main thing is the complexity and sophistication of our product design in today's environment you can see lot of new products are developed and uh, the sophistication and complexity is growing every day so due to those things we need to apply gdnt so that we will make sure that the component is properly explained to the manufacturer and whatever the design engineer needs or whatever he wishes he, it can be achieved by the manufacturer so for that we need to use the gdnt and the next one is we need a common language so as you know uh, now the global market is open and we can do business in the world like from india you can do business with the us or in the uk but we need a common language for the communication for that we are using english as a business language similar to that we need a common engineering language in the global market for communicating in the engineering terminologies or the drawing communication for that we develop the gdnt so gdnt is now called as a common engineering language okay so now we will learn detail about gdnt in further sessions